Game theory attempts to model the decisions that we make as human beings. The most famous game theory game is the prisoner's dilemma model. The scenario is pretty simple. Two cons are picked up for committing a crime. They're interrogated separately and don't know what the other one has or has not said. They are aware that if one dobs on the other while the other keeps their mouth shut, the silent crim will get a heavy sentence and the grass will get off, turning Queen's evidence, my lad. If each dobs on the other, then they will end up getting a severe sentence, but not the whole 10 years, because they will have demonstrated that they acted together. To my mind, the logic gets a bit ropey here. They're also aware that if they both stay stum, they will be done for a lesser crime and will receive like a really short sentence, say one year's porridge, as they used to say. Porridge is thick, you have to stir it to make it properly. Stirabin is a Romany word for prison. So many connections. This, that's the uh, prisoner's dilemma, not the etymology of porridge, can be mapped out in terms of the years without parole that each would serve in any given circumstance. Silent, silent equals one plus one equals two years in total. Silent, dob and vice versa, naught plus ten equals ten years in total. Dob, dob, five plus five, ten years in total. So if we look at the overall picture, the payoff for dobbing can be very high if the other prisoner is a person of character. However, if both are narcs, then the payoff is quite serious, five years each, which still equates to a total of ten years. The best strategy is for them to cooperate and get the one year sentence, a total of two years that will be gone in a flash with both feeling that they've stood up for the... On the face of it, this model is daft. What tea leaf would, in their right mind, concoct such a scheme? The world just doesn't work that way. It doesn't equate to anything that could approximately be described as reality. But hey, that's the way the systems theory rolls. In fact, the systems theorist proved that the US would win the Vietnam War if it dropped X amount of bombs on Y amounts of the Viet Cong. And look what happened there. But that's the point. It was taken seriously and regarded as an interpolation of reality. Oh, where are you now? Pussy willow that smiled on this leaf when I was alone. You... But this simple prisoner's dilemma model didn't cut it for altruism. And that was Price's genius. With his ability to mesh different fields of interest and combine his polymath sensibilities, he could see that the model didn't map onto the real, at least not in its simple form. Because in life, the decisions we make have repercussions, and then we have to make other decisions. And we make those other decisions based upon our experience of outcomes from the original decisions. We learn from experience. So he hit upon the idea that an iterated prisoner's dilemma model would do the trick for altruism, that we could mathematically model it based upon the fact that a prisoner or a player would learn from the results of the previous episode come game. This means, for example, that the next time our incompetent brothers in crime get caught, the dobber, the crim who told on his mate, would be punished by the dobby, the crim who stayed silent. The more times this happened, experience would tell, and eventually, with accumulated knowledge, the unreformable criminal duo would figure out that cooperation was the order of the day. Altruism would emerge through experience. I guess prison didn't work as either deterrent or engine of reform for these two. Now this was what the equations looked like. Some of you may be able to understand what's going on here. I can't. But I'm reliably informed that they do the trick of modelling genetic variation with an altruistic twist. Price had boiled down a very human trait to the kind of thing that Newton would have loved. A mathematicization of the universe. Altruism, that would seem the most human of traits, was actually a product of our genes. 
ultimately here. There is no room for moral choice or God-ordained nature granting homo sapiens a special license complete with a soul. Instead, there was reproduction, genetic replication, ACGT, 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 almost ad infinitum. I think of Price like I think of Sid Barrett, an accident waiting to happen. Everyone says that Sid took an acid trip too many and ended up brain fried. I say he was frazzled before he ever touched LSD. Price was a troubled man whose scientific endeavour exacerbated what was lying there already, his concerns about the deterministic nature of the best of being human were an exaggerated form of all our concerns about how determined the universe is. And it really wasn't a step too far to swap biological determinism for religious determinism. At least with religion, Price could bring agency back into the picture and decide that he was going to do his best to follow the example of the Son of God and sacrifice himself. This is a strange place for Darwinism to end up the Darwinian who ended up a creationist. But what really could be more apposite than this? In a way that none of the Paleites were able to do. Not Bell, not Halford, not McCoy, not any of them. He was able to glimpse and then describe the mind of God in maths and then find intolerable what he had discovered about the determined nature of the universe. I was going to end with group selection and sociobiology. I find myself run out of time. I'll post the substandard material from last year, so at least we can have a meaningful discussion about it. But the big message is that group selection is back, at least with E.O. Wilson, the man who did so much to ratify inclusive fitness and then build it into a biological model that allowed everything, and I mean everything, to be explained by our genomes. This was sociobiology, a theory that used the genes I view to demonstrate that biology held the key to understanding sociology and just about everything else that was striving to explain the hows and whys of human behaviour and social organisation. But his original model did not do the trick with altruism, and so he shifted back to the older idea of group selection, much to the chagrin of the Dawkinses of the world.